do. How y'all do? Yeah, you yeah, do. Because so. I get, I don't like. She it. won't I'm even too, make eye contact. I with don't me. even say bye at the end of our podcast because <laughs> no. I'm like, I'm gonna see you next week. Like I get, yeah, you're not awkward. good. At the I'm a little funny with that too. You're good once you're worn down. <laughs> I'm like that too, but I feel like from filming and doing lives, like my, like, intro is always like. Hi, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. And then I'm just like, why? Like, can you just yeah. be like, no, everyone hey, acts a little, little no. different when everyone there's go, a camera. Uh, uh, <clears throat> <sighs> Welcome to the space. <laughs> there you go. Oh my God, Anna. That was That's really good. good. Thank yeah. you. I'm I think the oil, inner. the relax oil is hitting. Thank you. Have you always had this calm of a voice? Like, when you were in high school, would people say, like, you're so calming, like your voice? <laughs> You guys, I, just, I really want I you to get to know. know the real me. This is why you're she here. Goes, this is all an act. No. The second I leave, I'm yelling at my husband. I mean, the range is yeah, it's very beautiful. severe. Yeah. But it's truly why I, I do everything that I do because it's helped me like drop more into my voice. Like Got I feel it. like when I've heard myself on camera years ago, I'm yeah. like, that's, I'm not in my body. Body. Ooh, that is That's so, so interesting. interesting. It reminds me of like the Kardashians over the years. Yeah. How their voice changes and you know they're going through different things with their identity and their like self-love. I think it's when you're like really grounded in yourself. Like your voice, like we were talking about this, like I feel like your your voice has this like your, your grounding in your voice. It's funny though because I totally know when I'm feeling uncomfortable, my voice does change. Same. Yeah, like your voice will crack sometimes <laughs> and I'll know that you're uncomfortable. I also nervous laugh, like nonstop. <laughs> but that's so interesting that we love talking about how the physical and mental are connected. Yeah, I mean, entirely. It's like, I, I think it truly is everything. Mm -hmm, you know, it's yeah. one thing to work on like the way you want to look, but I think to go that step deeper and to really go inside and work on yourself within as like Ooh, crazy yeah. and cliche or all the things that it can sound. It's really the truth. The we're, truth. We're a little nervous to be here because I noticed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we just have to address the elephant in the room. No, we should. You're me. Your <laughs> your last um guest was Deepak Chopra. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I think did she mean to email us? <laughs> Following it up with Giggly Squad is a bold move on your part. We did have McDonald's two days ago. My mom walks in my house. My mom is a health queen. And she goes, she sees the McDonald's yeah. bag. And she's and she disappointed. Goes, Who got you into McDonald's? Because I did not raise you like this. As if you've been hanging out with the wrong people. And, and that I people said, is me. <laughs> <laughs> and she just shakes her head. And I was like, I did hip hop yoga that day. <laughs> no, I, I've followed you for years. and been like obsessed with you. So when Han was like, oh, we're going to go on Melissa's podcast, I immediately went into a cold sweat. So I was like, <laughs> but what are we going to say? Because sh I follow you as like aspirational. Like your workouts got me through COVID beyond like your voice. Really? Like there's something about your voice that it literally does something to my brain. Like you should record children's books. Have you ever thought about it? You should. I have. No, I have. Hmm. And so I, I was like, like what are we going to say on here? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. we rot in bed. Mm -hmm. Okay, just so you guys know, I I'm I don't really get nervous. Mm -hmm. I would I'm so, I was I don't feel nervous now that I'm with yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Was so nervous before. Because after I met you I realized, okay, <laughs> you're you're so you're nervous about. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like this is going to be you know, plus, like it's not like we've met in person. Right. You think you know these people and I truly I think this is important to share because this is a wellness podcast. Mm -hmm. But to me, I think the most essential ingredient to like living a very content life is joy. Yeah. And you guys have, you bring me so much joy. Aww. Thank you. It's, I really mean it. Thank, Thank you. you. No, I think my favorite messages are the girls that are driving to work in the morning, whether they love or hate their jobs. And like, even though we put one episode out a week, like they'll split it up on their like drives to work in the morning. They're like, it sets my day so well of like, we're laughing, we're joking, and then I can walk into work. And that for me, like I didn't even think about that mm. aspect. When we started podcasts, I was like, 
people are going to laugh randomly and then forget about it. But like to know that it sets someone's entire day, their entire week for like how they feel like, okay, I'm walking into work. I'm laughing. I'm happy. When usually you're like, I don't want to be here. This is stupid. I hate everyone here. Like, <laughs> so, not here. We saw these offices. Every, this is gorgeous. <laughs> I would move in here. <laughs> but no, it does. It's laughter. Really, there is something that is it's unmatched. Unmatched. And I've always been the biggest laugher. I yeah. mean, my daughter, who's five, she's like, mom, you laughed. Like, you're, you're laughing yeah. too much. Yeah. Like, you're embarrassed. Like, like you laugh. No, I know. And yeah. I'm like, it's not anything to be embarrassed of. And she's like, I just, I feel like you're always laughing. And I'm like, I, I like, always have been this way. Seriously, mom. I'm like, do you want mommy to cry or laugh? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I, guess I, guess I can sweetheart. access both. <laughs> but it's, it's funny because Paige and I, we've had a long friendship and we've like had a lot of experiences together. And the one thing that's been consistent is that we can find humor mm -hmm. in things. Mm -hmm. And that's like the one mental health thing that I think we are good at yeah. is like, we don't let ourselves get too down about anything and yeah. we can make fun of ourselves. Like something horrible will happen to me and I will tell Paige and she will just, um, I hate saying this word on Melissa Woodhouse podcast, yeah. shit all over it. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll make me just be like, you silly goose yeah. and move forward because we're realizing how much is perspective and you can... We can't control what happens to us, but mm -hmm. we can control, am I going to laugh at this or am I going to be like, woe is me and create a narrative in my head that's yeah. like really sad. And I feel like I can be so like self-critical. Like I, I'm way more pessimistic than Hannah is. And so I feel like that's why we're so good together because mm -hmm. I'm selfish and I really use her just to laugh all day. <laughs> like she's always like entertaining, doing something, saying something. And I can kind of... Like, because I feel like my true self really is very quiet, very reserved. Like, I will be in the corner of the room and you won't even know I'm there. Where Hannah will walk into a room and you immediately <laughs> know she's there. And so I like that because it takes the pressure off of me, mm -hmm. I feel like. So, yeah, really, yeah, she's just she's like my like, hired comedian friend that I bring <laughs> around. And I'm like, <laughs> I love how she didn't ask us any question. We're like, this is why I love no, Paige. No, I no, think I'm like, therapy. Yeah. I'm like, and also... No. <laughs> One time. <laughs> Maybe that's why I am the way that I am. <laughs> Honestly, do, doesn't it, it? Everything becomes revealed when you sit here with a mic. Yeah. And you like, it is therapy. Yeah, definitely. Isn't it? And you guys record once a week. <laughs> once a week. Definitely the best part of our week for sure. It's really therapeutic. Because it is an hour where we're talking about nonsense. Anything you want. Yeah. But whenever anything happens that annoys me through the week, we have this notes app. Mm -hmm. So I'll write down something that happened. Okay. Yeah. So it's almost like I don't have to process it till I sit down. Yes. And then I talk about it. We laugh about it. And yep. then the, I'm, I mean, it's kind of a crazy stand-up comic mindset. But when something happens to me, I always go, that's a new 10 minutes on stage. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Which is great. It's content. You can feel that though, because it, everything that you guys share on the podcast. I think with everything that you do, it's so authentically, like it doesn't feel like you're, you guys are searching for things. Right. Mm. Like it just, I don't know. I, I feel like right now and you, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but in this era of everything is content and, mm -hmm. and look, I record Which a lot of stuff. Yes. Yeah. And I try not to ever think of it as that because then it takes away from you sharing Right. Your Absolutely. life and yourself. But with the way that you do it, you can tell that it hadn't fully been processed or thought out. And it's just like mm -hmm. thrown out on the table. You're so right, because there's so much content out there and people are smart. They know when something's forced or you right. don't actually want to be there. And I think what Paige and I are good at, she's really good at saying no. That's good. And like, we are very into like not betraying ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're very thing. into mm -hmm. that phrase. Oh, I love not it. Not betraying Let, ourselves. I heard, a therapist said it to me years ago. And I just like can never get it out of my head because I could never explain that feeling like when you do something and then you feel bad after, but you didn't like do anything wrong. But you're like, why do I not? You feel like icky. Yeah, you feel icky. And like we're a reality TV background. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think people, obviously everyone watches reality TV, but no one really knows reality TV unless you've done it. And you're not in that editing bay and you're not putting the story together. You're just there filming. So I feel like there were so many moments of watching ourselves and being like, 
that is not me. Or maybe that was me, but I don't identify like with that person. So then when COVID hit and we started doing lives and our podcast eventually started, I think we were so obsessed with it because we genuinely felt like, oh, people are listening and this is actually us. This is the real us. And they're responding to it, which is crazy, crazy. Crazy. Because you're writing the script, literally. Yeah, because it's basically just us sitting there for an hour nonstop talking. It also is healing. It's healing. healing. Even for like, that's why I got into stand up because I couldn't control a lot of things. But when I was on stage, your brain has to be shut off. You have to be in the moment. And my brain would never shut the fuck up. So I was like, (laughs) I had to literally be on stage in front of people to be in that moment and not be thinking about things. And then for people to say like, oh, I don't think she's funny or something. Like any negative comment was almost therapeutic for me because I'm like, at least they saw me for me. Yeah. I love that. So it doesn't bother you? So I I, I came into it with this confidence and I think that's why it started working for me because I was like, just see me for me and I don't care about the rest. Yeah. Um, And that became like an awakening. Okay, that's wow. a strong word. No, I love it. <laughs> no, no, but, but I didn't show where it was. was. Stage, <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> there are a lot of times where people will dislike us for certain things maybe they see on TV and you're like, but I want to like fix this because you're disliking me for something that's like not me. Right. Well, do you know so it's like, learned? if you just like me for who I really am, that actually feels better because it's like, well, not to right. make it even deeper. I agree. I- could yeah. not agree more. Not to get even more like no, let's, no, let's go no, deep. Not to start I feel like we're, I feel like we're, we're gonna start not digging. Not to start a kerfuffle, but <laughs> I, I do think when people when you oh no now I just blacked out. Oh no, <laughs> I hate when that happens. Sorry, that I was got, our okay. I got all no, nervous. I got all excited. No, that happens to um, me too. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, okay, I can feel it. Be one with your worthiness. Connect to <laughs> oh, your, yeah. your higher self. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know what it is. So I had this huge fear of people not like meeting me and not getting the right idea of me or like them not seeing me for who I am. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's why I'm outgoing because I'm like, I got to say something funny yep. and show them I'm smart and show them I'm nice. Mm-hmm. And then I realized you actually don't know who you are either. <laughs> so who are you trying to control what everyone thinks of yeah. you when you don't even know who you are? And I think once I released from this like, well, I'm not really there yet, but like releasing that control of like, I need everyone to see me a type of way and kind of being like, wait, there are so many different sides to me. There are so many people that'll see different sides and through their perspectives. And that's for people who are influencers and not, I feel like. Yeah, for literally everyone just walking to work every day that like, you don't have to be this like, idea of yourself all the time that like, we're always evolving and changing. Like, I'm different than I was two months ago. For sure. And And then I was always afraid of bad things happening to me. And then I realized like, oh my God, those bad things like made me so much more funny and interesting. Yeah, (laughs) just crazy. Okay. Well, that was a journey. So (laughs) I I love it. I I feel like we're going to go on such a journey together. And this is my favorite part of of having guests. I don't watch reality TV. Mm -hmm. I was telling you this before. And which I kind of love because that's not what I was interested in in like having you both here. That's mm-hmm. not like how I fell in love with you. But can you just take it back to you were on the show, Summer House. You were still on the show? Mm-hmm. Okay. You were no longer on the show. Mm-hmm. Just like share a little how the experience started and because that's how you became friends, mm-hmm. right? It was really magical. Yeah, we became Wait. friends literally. Uh, it was very serendipitous because we met like three months prior to being casted on the show. And Hannah actually was casted with another guy and I wasn't. And I just thought like, oh, okay, yeah, like it wasn't. I didn't know really what it was yet. So it wasn't like I was upset by it. And then two weeks prior to filming, someone had dropped out and they had called me. Wow. And they were like, you know, Hannah, and you know, Jordan, because we work together at the same media company and Hannah was in the office. I wasn't. So I didn't really know her. And so we started. That's how we started, became friends. So like that first day of filming, I knew who she was. Right. And like we had said hi before, but we weren't friends. And then Hannah always says like, there's no bond like trauma bond. (laughs) There is no bond (laughs) like the first day on a reality television show (laughs) because you're not you don't know what to expect. So everything is new. And you're just like, this is crazy. There's And everyone else knows what they're doing and you don't. Right. So we shared a room and like that first night, 
I texted my mom and was like, I can't, I'm never coming back. This is crazy. This is not You fell normal. asleep at like 9 p.m. and people, the producers were like, <laughs> She's hey. so boring. <laughs> I have this thing where if I get really overwhelmed or really stressed or just like uncomfortable in a situation, narcolepsy. Just falls <laughs> Full asleep. On fall asleep. It's wow. so, I've done it since I was little. And so I fell asleep like the first night Hannah was having the best time, mm, like yep, strong work. Well, <laughs> pretend that, like, you know, <laughs> laughing, having fun, like doing what she was supposed to be doing. And I was just like, this is so not for me. Well, I'm more of like a people pleaser, coachable. I'm like, tell me what you need me to do and I'll yeah. make everyone happy. And Paige was just like, This is weird. This mm-hmm. feels weird. And then when the first season aired, people really did respond to our friendship. And we didn't know that was going to happen because yeah, we, we couldn't see how we were being portrayed and on camera. And we didn't camera. know what we were doing. Right. And, but we just knew that, like, we laughed a lot together and the rest of the cast maybe didn't <laughs> love some of our jokes or didn't get some of our jokes or whatever. So we just did realize that we, the two of us had a different bond. My whole life I wanted to be successful because people would love me. You know, mm. like, when I won my tennis matches, everyone thought I was really great. When I did well in school, people were proud of me. I just got fired from my jobs. And this guy I just got engaged to, like, he's going to think I'm a loser or, like, something's wrong with me. And I really had to dig deep to be like, who who are you and why are you and what are you doing? Um, But one thing about me is I'm very, um, I like, I like change. And I also like a challenge. <laughs> so I really took it yeah. as like, oh, you going to fuck with me? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, that- you going to you gonna do that to me? <laughs> no, seriously. Like- she's so good yeah. at like, honestly, my mom gave her the best compliment and me like the best insult. She was, she said she, she was like, wow, yeah, if what happened to Hannah happened to you, you probably wouldn't have been able to come back from it. You're way too sensitive you would have, it no, would, but, you would have gotten out of entertainment. You would have come home. Like it would have been over for you. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, probably, probably. And she was like, but Hannah <laughs> is so strong. And like Hannah bounced back. Not only did she bounce back, but like a thousand times better. And because truly at the end of the day, she was not made for reality TV, but she was made to be an entertainer. Mm-hmm. She's hilarious. She's outgoing. Like, all of these things. And that's not why people like her. It's the people like her because of the way she makes them feel about themselves. Well, it's why I like her. So to hear her sit here and be like, oh, when I won tennis, everyone liked me because I was great. Or on reality TV, everyone liked me. It's really not. It's everyone likes you because you let them escape for a minute and laugh. And like, it's not that serious. And she's like, look, I was on reality TV. I got fired and like, I'm fine. Like, I do think she gives people, you know, she went through this whole public thing of people being like, you're the worst. I hate you. We're unfollowing you, all of this stuff and then bounce back. And so it's just, it is, it is a crazy journey of perseverance. And I don't think people talk about that enough. Perseverance you, was a huge like, word. You yeah, don't ask me to spell it. <laughs> and I'm like so, don't. I literally. No, that was this really is, beautiful. You're just, like, this is my person. Like, no, you, she's my no, like, Hannah always says, I, we're married. We're and married. My, and my and boyfriend boyfriends. is just, yeah. Our, I love you. I love your love boyfriend for it's, each other. You really crazy. feel a genuine It's friendship. crazy. Like, no, I we don't have them. sisters. So I think yeah. like we're each other's sister. And the thing is also like the firing was not easy on Paige. And right. we had just started Giggly Squad. And I'm not going to lie. There was a moment where I was like, am I bringing her down? Right. Oh, my God. Well, there's a moment where it's like she doesn't need to be doing this yeah. with me. We didn't anticipate this to happen. And we had to work through some of our own stuff to make Giggly Squad work. And I think that's why the pot is so good because our, our friendship persevered. Yeah, it's true. And it wasn't fake. It yeah. wasn't like, because let's def- put a smile on. And there definitely was a time where people around me, whether it was like people I worked with or who were just older that would question like, are you still going to do Giggly Squad? And I never even had a thought in my mind like, oh yeah, I'm going to stop doing Giggly Squad. And I remember getting so mad like, why would you even ask that? Like, she didn't murder someone. Yeah, we're going to do our podcast yeah. that, like, maybe 5,000 people listen to that watched us on live. Like, yeah, we're going to keep doing it. And 
thank God. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. But also, like, even if we hadn't, even if we had stopped, mm-hmm. I feel like that's fine, too. You know? Like, I would have died. <laughs> <laughs> what would I be doing right now? But it's like, <laughs> Giggly Squad was never about the views or money. No. It was literally just like, I like you, you like me. We have this, like, yeah. very special, fun thing that makes us happy. But I do think if anyone listening is, like, going through a hard time, I just kind of like being like, I went through a hard time, like all my fears happened and like I survived it. And like, I'm going to have hard times in the future, but like, just know if you're going through like a really dark time, it's, it's going to be okay. Yeah, it's and not it's forever. so corny, but also like Paige said, I wanted to be an entertainer before reality TV. I was doing comedy videos. I was writing. Um, and I think I found myself in the wrong lane and the universe Mm -hmm. knew that I was in the wrong lane and the universe kicked my ass out of that lane in a traumatic way because I'm tough. I would have stayed. I would have fought for that job. So the universe was like, absolutely not. (laughs) Redirection. Mm -hmm. My redirection was so intense and Mm -hmm. powerful. And like to this day, like my my parents, they're just like, it was was a horrible time for my whole family. And they were just like, thank God it happened to you now. And I just think about like, thank God I kept just like looking forward. But the mm-hmm. comedy community and Paige really helped me because I would, I would go to comedy at night, right? And and I would kind of explain what was going on, and they would laugh so hard. <laughs> they would laugh so hard. They were like, "Okay, so you are the Putin of Bravo." Like, just, <laughs> they would just like make. They'd be like, "If I was in your position, I would have done so many worse things." And it made like it put life in perspective because a lot of the time we get in these like little <clears throat> like. We think pockets things are pockets of like, yeah. and you don't realize how much bigger the world, you know, it's like, that's everything. it's like going to, you go to South America for, for a week yeah. and you're like, oh, no one gives a fuck. <laughs> right. Like what's <laughs> happening? Like, go on the subway yeah. and just be like, oh, no one gives a fuck. <laughs> There's a whole world out there. No, South America. So cheap. Like, just go outside. <laughs> no, literally. Just put your phone down. Yeah, We're all so consumed with ourselves and our yes. stuff that it becomes all we can see. I think it's so important to like with everything that Mm -hmm. we're all doing. It's like even in the, I don't love the word influencer. I don't know if either one of you connect with that word, but I think just like overall in the space, it's like things just aren't as important as everyone's making everything out to be. And it's just when you can peel back the layers and really spin a perspective shift on everything like it just like lightens the way that you move around the world and everyone does think they need to tell I was just having this conversation with someone who has a big following on social media and it's like you know oh my followers know this I'm like you don't have to tell them everything like it's okay yeah well I had that I gave like everything because mm-hmm. I'm Mrs. Type A. I'm like, whatever you guys want, I will give. I will be the best I can yeah. be for this Are show. Are you Type A? I'm no, like, you're so unorganized. What do you I'm so unorganized. I'm a, my mom is like. <laughs> type A is very organized. I'm a really <laughs> mentally ill combination <laughs> where like my mom is the most OCD type A. She was a principal of a middle school wow. in Brooklyn, like r- run yeah. shit, goes in my apartment, will just reorganize everything. And then my dad is all charisma mm. and no structure. That's so then me. you put it together <laughs> and she's a mess. She's yeah. a mess. But I'm like, I'll make sure I have all my, like work, I'm very organized. Yes. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> I just well, no, talk about, about myself. Like, <laughs> feeling like you have to tell everyone everything. Yeah. Right? Like, do, yeah. Oh, no, we, I actually, this is crazy. I still think about this. And this is like, what, 15 years ago? <sighs> when Kim Kardashian wasn't going to show her like, wedding to Kanye or something, one People wedding or mind. something. I remember being like, that's so rude. We've watched her for 10 years on the show. Why wouldn't she show it to us now? Like we made her famous. We made, like, I remember being like, I want to see it. Yeah. And then now I'm in this space and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> she, we didn't want to give her what, 24 hours. Right. Like, yeah. And I look at it so differently and it is just changing your perspective. Like, The cliche of like, you don't know until you walk in that person's shoes. Like, you genuinely have no idea. Like, people say like, oh, there's like a curtain in Hollywood. Like, there is a curtain everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, everywhere. everywhere. Mm -hmm. 
Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like we don't know. One of these people could have married someone. Like, we have no idea. <laughs> yeah. I have a confession. I feel like some people know this, but a lot of people don't. So I auditioned to be on America's Next Top Model. Yeah. And it was like my dream. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, I have to be on this show. Like, it's the only way I'm going to feel important or like yeah. become something and break into the modeling world. And I think about this all the time. There, there was a clip recently that like spread like wildfire on TikTok. God, things move yeah. there, huh? And it was a clip of me like being a bitch to one of the girls yeah. in the grocery store. This is These are my premeditative yeah. days, girls. Yeah. <laughs> so let's just say, I am, thank God mm-hmm. yeah. I was not chosen to be on that show because I, I'm just like, I would have taken it all down yeah. with me. Very reactive and just explosive. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember going home I was flying from LA back to New York and I was so broken. Mm -hmm. And I was like, my life's over. I'm never going to become anything. Like, this is it. I was so depressed. That's when good things happen. And my, it's true. But I really went through just like beating myself up, hating myself, spiraled into an eating disorder that Mm. was like just this occasional thing that I was like already getting into before, but it just took it into a a whole different direction. Yeah. Yeah. And then like going to meet a bunch of like agents at modeling agencies and just like, just being like beaten down. It was like, it was so hard on my mental health. Like rejection is, especially when it's like, Public. About your looks, too, and no. when it's public. Yes. Well, also, America's Next Top Model is going viral right now. It's like you said, like, when you look back, mm-hmm. people are like, that was crazy. Tyra yeah, said that to her that face. Was- <laughs> that was insane. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I love that show. Like, yeah. in the time, I was like, this is great. Right. Um, but the truth is, is you believe what you see. And that's mm-hmm. fine. It's entertaining. But I, I, we have, I actually have this joke that we joke about on Giggly Squad about how, like, no one becomes a yoga teacher. I love, I've, I've listened to this. Oh, a, good time. This a good time. I'm like, she's not wrong. <laughs> and, like, and I don't mean it as like, I think people, I think people got what I meant, but yeah. as in like, you have to have known like being broken to know how to heal. Yeah. Because you don't heal if you haven't been broken. And yoga teachers would not have the empathy to have everyone in that room have this like beautiful, incredible experience unless they've had horrible experiences. Right. So like, it's true. I know you've been through shit to get to this point where like we walked in and she was like, we need a healing oil. And yeah. I was like, she fucking, this bitch gets it. <laughs> This bitch Wait, saw her energy what? and was like, put this on. <laughs> At what, like not, I don't want to say what age because I feel like that's everyone can do something different at each age. But like, what point in your life were you like, okay, and it's enough now. Like, I'm going to be like, I actually take what I put in my body and like what I do seriously. Like, what mm-hmm. was it? Because I feel like, I yeah, no. There at some point. <laughs> yeah, no, I can, I'll definitely tell you there is a, there is a moment. <laughs> yeah. And it was my lowest low. And it was after a night of drinking my face off, yep. binging, purging, on the floor, like literally just like abusing myself. Yeah. It was like noon, slept. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I fucking hate myself. Yeah. Like, I'm, this is disgusting. Yeah. I hate how I feel. This isn't fun anymore. And it's, it's like, I, I have that choice and I so vividly saw it where it's like, I can keep going. Yeah. Down this path of mass destruction and mm-hmm. just, you know, taking everything down along the way. Or I can be honest yep. and ask for help. Mm-hmm. And I think growing up with a very dysfunctional, like traumatizing childhood too, I was always the one who like had it together, yeah. took care of the house. Like I was literally a mini mom since wow. seven years old. So I've always carried the weight of like, you've got this, you do this. Like yep. no one can help you through this. Like you just have to buckle up and yeah. stay strong. And then that was like my moment of like weakness, but actual strength for yeah. the first time of being like, I need help. Like I can't, I can't do this. So I went to bed mm-hmm. and I slept. We love that. 
<laughs> Thank God. And, and then I the woke up. Step. And then we can identify <laughs> I, We that. are on that step currently. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up and I called one of my best friends to this day. And mm-hmm. I was like, I need your therapist. Like, I need, I need some help. Wow. Yeah. And oh that my- was like literally it. I mean, I know everyone goes through different journeys yeah. of, you know, I, I wasn't an alcoholic or an addict, but I had a toolbox that was filled with a lot of unhealthy vices, vices that yeah. I loved to access. Yeah. yeah. And it made me a monster. I do think you reaching out to someone and being ready to be seen for who you are is like so strong. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why like Paige, I joke, like all we do is joke, but like we've seen each other at our like rawest, raw chicken raw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. Our most tired, our most scared, our most embarrassed. Yeah. And I guess like, I know that she accepts me for that. So mm-hmm. then you just start like, I loved when you said how you move through the world. That like stuck with me. Yeah. Because moving through the world is all we're doing. That's like, it. I know that people are like, oh, I want this. I want that. But like, it's about this moment. How are you moving? And you know, those days where you're like, I'm not moving with the mm-hmm. right vibes yeah. right now. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, the days when you're like, you think you're in a rom-com and you have the music in the background. Like, she's moving. <laughs> yeah. She's moving. But moving through the world is fucking hard. It it's is. Tough. And it goes like this. Like, even I think yeah. a lot of people think I'm just like this super peaceful, like mm-hmm. meditative person. I'm really calm. I, I mean, I have access to that now. Like, yeah. I know how to regulate my nervous system to be in a relaxed state. Mm-hmm. But like my, like my peak is like, anxious like that's truly yeah. more of my baseline is yes. like really anxious yeah. really irritable annoyed at everything yeah. like nothing is right the mm-hmm. only person who can do everything right is, is me, me. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah like it's no, like preaching to the choir no it takes a lot of work to shift out of that headspace yeah and by the way I snap back into it every like there is multiple times in a day where I can quickly go back there and I'm mm-hmm. like it's like Well, especially when you're putting yourself out there. Oh, yeah. Because I was like, you're putting your face out there. You're on the line. You're paying people in like a Mm -hmm. company to do stuff for you. And you have to realize like, yeah, you have to prioritize your emotions. And like leadership is a whole, like you want to lead how you want to be a mom. Like you want to lead by example. Yes. Um, And it's important to be honest with yourself, I think, to be like, are we... Moving through the world yeah, the right like, way. Are we okay? Are we Every good? step of the way, too. Are we because good? Because it changes, like, mm-hmm. That's why so I think some frequently. celebrities become monsters because some people around them are just like, yes, yes, oh. yes. Do you feel like becoming, like, a mom, do you feel like you're more patient or do you feel like you have to, it's, like, more stressful? Mm, good question. I feel like it's made me realize that I don't have a lot of patience. Yeah. But I really work on like yeah. the access to to finding it. Yeah. But if I were to ask my husband if I was patient, he would probably say no. Mm. But also like if you were a man. <laughs> <laughs> Are they irritable? Are they impatient? They, like, it's a thin line because yeah, I'm trying to you. work on, like, I can be Mrs. Nice Girl, make sure everyone mm-hmm. around me is good. But I also realize there's moments that I should have fought for myself that I didn't mm-hmm. because I wanted everyone to be comfortable around me. Mm-hmm. So it's this thin line of am I being hormonal and irritable right. or am I fucking right? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I am so there no, with I you. Hate and I'm battling that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's that. so true. <laughs> what did they you really? Sometimes I'm like, I think someone needs to speak up. (laughs) (laughs) I think someone needs to say something. It's going to be me. (laughs) Isn't that the best part of having a platform, though, that you're just like, that's one thing that I like gravitate towards you guys, too, because you just very confidently say whatever the hell you want to say. Yeah, I think part of it, too, is like having a platform. I always thought like, oh, okay, I'm going to have Instagram followers and I'm going to show outfits and we're going to say like funny jokes. And you don't realize that you end up having this like responsibility almost sometimes. Like I get a lot of college girls that will DM me real time. Hey, I'm at a frat house. This is what's happening. Like, what do I do? And I'm in it. Like, we're, (laughs) 
we are there. I'm like, well, do one, send voice notes. Yeah. Like, I love you a voice wearing? Note. You know, like w- my favorite is like reve- I got this girl this like a revenge outfit for a senior boyfriend on New Year's Eve, and I think about it to this day. Like, what happened that night? Um, oh now I forget what I was. Saying. <laughs> but no, like you get this weird responsibility, and then you feel you do feel connected to certain people that will message you and whatever. And I didn't realize, I think, when I started having a platform that I was going to have that responsibility. And I didn't realize how much I was going to love being like, fuck men. Mm -hmm. And just because you're a girl Mm. doesn't mean you have to do X, Y, and Z. Mm. And I think and people all, didn't see that in your bingo card. And I didn't and I didn't see that. <laughs> no I one didn't because I've always been, yeah, like girl power for sure. But I've never been like, I, I don't know. I've never. I think when we realize that girls are actually listening to what we say, which is crazy because we yeah. never listen to anything. But like, <laughs> like listening, like we almost got excited that like, wow, I could say something to make a girl who feels down in the dumps yes. realize that she's that bitch and you get addicted to we that. We told oh, everyone yes. to go off their birth control. We did have we to do a PSA go, that we did like we are not, not doctors. <laughs> we, <laughs> but, like, we told, we've made so many girls break up with their boyfriends. Yeah. And I think, and we, no one's regretted it. <laughs> and I guy. didn't realize like that was going to happen. And I think I'm so passionate about it because not only do I date a man who's also on reality mm-hmm. TV, but I see the way people respond to him and certain things he'll do. And then I'll see it flipped mm. for the women version. And I was like, this is what? Drastically like, different. This is saying something different. Or behavior. Different. He could have a behavior that is unfavorable, unfavorable and I would be getting the messages. You're stupid. Why would you date this person? Mm. Blah, 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 blah. And then Ooh. he could be doing something so favorable and everyone loves him and it's, you're way too good for her. Like, right. where it's like, oh, but I thought a couple months ago mm. I was the super <laughs> one. So I took that and nothing to him, like it was nothing he was doing. He was literally just being himself. So it wasn't like anger toward him. It was more that I was like, I have a responsibility now to like tell girls that if they're doing a long distance relationship and they don't want to move to that city, they don't need to move to that city. Like just because you're a woman doesn't mean you have to do X, Y, and Z oh, I love because you're yeah. a woman. You literally don't have to do any of that. And people watch Paige like in a way where she's aspirational. Like oh they'll see the outfit. I mean, <laughs> it's so you true. Like people are. see the outfit and the next day, girls all over New York City are oh, yeah, wearing I'm getting it. This. But it's like, <laughs> with that power... I love that leopard is in. That's like my mom oh. wife dream. I love yeah. that you're able to be like, wear leopard <laughs> and don't just move to where the guy who's tall and good looking yeah. lives. And thankfully, I have a boyfriend that was like, okay, I get it. You're like, you're very vocal. You say whatever and he doesn't take offense to it. But I'm like, no, this is bullshit because there's a girl somewhere who's not on TV and doesn't have a following and she's getting bullied to do something that she doesn't really want to do. Mm-hmm. What, because she's a girl? Like, and it's just, I and I talked to my mom about it actually because she's like, growing up, you were always with the boys. Like, it wasn't like you grew up and I said, you can't do that or Like you've never exhibited feeling, oh, I'm lesser than because I'm a girl. And I didn't. Like I never thought that. I went to an all-girls high school. So I was very empowered of like, I can do anything a guy can do. And it really wasn't until I was on reality TV that I saw the way people think. (laughs) Oh, it's so misogynistic. I was like, wait. I can't even. That's crazy that that's how you think. And then I felt like I have to say something for the girls. Mm -hmm. And I also felt it's like powerful. Reality yeah. TV, like I just wanted to make jokes. I want to do confessionals, being funny and have fun. Right. But now there is this beautiful time mm-hmm. where women are like, I mean, we're running the nation, running the nation, <laughs> <we're> exhausted. <laughs> it's on our back, but also even comedy wise, like seeing like Joe Coy, you know, had a tough time, right? And mm-hmm. he like blamed the writers, and then Chelsea Handler had this basically the same gig and crushed it. Mm-hmm. And it's like. Women are funny. Women are independent. Women can do whatever we want. And I do think that Paige and I had to fight some of that. Like even with our own careers on reality TV, they didn't talk about my stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about the stuff that Paige is doing. They like to kind of oversimplify it Mm -hmm. where like the men's jobs are so put up on a pedestal and prioritized. And like... It makes me yeah, like I get oh, one of my favorite comments is that I like with my boyfriend for money. I'm like, I should 
that's the other way around. <laughs> like, obviously not. But I'm like, that's such oh, a rude I mean, comment. What, literally just because I'm a girl? You've never seen either of our bank accounts and I'm pretty sure... He's on an allowance. No, literally. <laughs> like, I'm pretty... Like, what? I get that all the time, too. <laughs> like, people are like, you, like you're where you are because your husband is is successful. And I'm like, do you see him on the mat? Like, I'm he, confused. He, like, no, he's ever put money into my business. Literally. Mm-hmm. It's, it, it's so, I don't know, it's so crazy. But also you do, there is something about being with a confident, successful man because mm-hmm. you want to respect the person you're with. So Always. like, if you end up being with a wealthy guy mm-hmm. or like a super successful guy, part of those qualities are hot. And, oh, it, yeah. and it doesn't mean that like you needed it. Also, he probably saw something in you that created like a partnership. And it's mm-hmm. not that like imbalance because, you know, women are not what we used to be. We're like we just were homemakers, which is totally cool, too. Right. And that's empowering if you can just be a homemaker. Right. right. If you want to be, of course. Yes. Right. I I always say like, no, I had no idea what he was getting himself into when he married me because I'm such a different person now. I mean, mm-hmm. thank God. Mm-hmm. He's changed too, but I just think like I'm completely different. Yeah. And I was always very driven and a hustler and a worker and did every, you know, did everything myself. But like now looking at like the woman that he's married, I'm like, you didn't like necessarily sign up for this. Like, how you yeah. doing over there? Because it's a lot for. Yeah. But he's he handles it it well. Yeah. Yeah. My boyfriend always says to me like, "You're a little tough on like you're tough," and I always like respond back, and I'm like, "But there's just a level of that I expect in a relationship and like in a partnership, and I hold myself to such a high standard that I." feel like my partner should too and like it should be equal and mm-hmm. and he like completely agreed then like completely agreed and was like no like I'm so thankful for certain things that like you call out or you say and we're just, obsessed with the concept of decentering men from your yeah. life and we're two people in relationships so it seems super hypocritical <laughs> <are so> funny. <laughs> but it's the concept of like if both are men. No, Hannah literally got married. I got married. And so she off brand. one picture. I post one picture of myself. <laughs> of her <I> husband. <laughs> you guys are so cute, by the way. And a good ebb oh and flow. God. Yeah. Oh my Strong God, ebb and you. flow. But yeah. the truth is, is, if that man left me tomorrow, if Craig left you tomorrow, yeah. we're Gucci. Yeah. And they know that. <laughs> and, and also, and, uh, not to say that, and so are they. Like, and, and, and so, so are, they. are they. Exactly. We, there's this beautiful thing that like, in this life, like we're choosing to be together. We don't need each other. Ooh, yes. Especially like within like my man is older and has been single a lot of his life. And he's like fully, I mean, I'm not a caretaker. Like I'm not helping him in any way. Yeah. We're both <laughs> like, I didn't trap him to be like, right. I make lunches for him every day. He doesn't right. have to do without me. And the average, <laughs> Which is fine too. That's yeah. But the <laughs> average man thinks that like every woman is like, we're dying to get married. And we're dying. Like, oh my God, you guys are like disappearing and like we need to snatch one yeah. up. I would love if they did all disappear. <laughs> <laughs> but we say that like you actually find the right energy when you're not making decisions based on the male gaze, when you're my, yeah. not making decisions. And because I was fully so boy crazy, like mm-hmm. I couldn't even join my friends because I'm like, he's not texting me back. Yeah. And I don't, I, he, no one looked at my Insta story and I can't be in the moment with my friends right now because I feel like shit because a man who literally is busy jerking off playing Xbox (laughs) (laughs) is not paying attention to me. And we've all been there because that's what we're told. That's how we're raised. And then once you realize like, oh, when you get in your own feminine, masculine, whatever energy, they just come to you and you could pick. This is true, you guys. I always say this. Like, Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, I just like, even when I thought I was like so obsessed with you, I couldn't be even more. I'm like, how can I be no, more obsessed you. with you? No, we hate men. We love no, the girls. Love we love the girls. <laughs> also, we feel so healthy being here at noon. No, it was I, so no, early. I already <laughs> feel like I, I feel like I drank a green juice and I didn't. You know, Melissa, uh, I should have had green juices for you guys. A green juice personified. Yeah. <laughs> you love spicy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely some spice. <laughs> can you guys share a little bit about girlhood and mm-hmm. I, I think getting really into this world of being in the public eye and like friends that you had before, did a lot of that change with? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I just felt that in my chest. And like, how do you navigate letting go Mm. of certain relationships and energies when you know? Can I? Yeah, you go. It's so funny because I saw a TikTok 
And she read the New York like, Times <laughs> when the whole like Roman Empire thing was happen happening, and they're like, "Oh, what's the girl version?" And I saw this one guy say, "Ask your girlfriend about her ex best friend," and like every video was girls just being like, "Oh." And it's so, like, I feel like people don't talk about that part. Like, being a girl and having relationships and these, like, outside influences of society and, like, jealousy and all of that. Like, we aren't like the guys. Like, we were just talking about on Giggly Squad. Like, when two guys walk into a room, they acknowledge each other. Whether it's head nod, head down, hey, you're a guy, like I'm a, a guy. A boys mm-hmm. club. When women walk into a room, we immediately are whether you admit it or not, a little bit defense mode because you're assessing the situation. What girl is here? Does that girl like me? Does that girl know my friend? Is that... And like, I joke, like, I have to make 10 compliments to make sure, like, everyone knows, like, like, no, we're good. Like, Like, we're good. But not everyone does. Imagine if men saw each other and they're like, dude, I love your shoes. (laughs) And your hair looks sick. And I (laughs) already... Are you using a new skincare routine? It looks... You're glowing. (laughs) And I have a bitchy face already. And I'm not not emotional. (laughs) I don't walk in smiling. So like sometimes I'll be like, and style. Like, and like, hi, how... And you have to like do that. But it's like, I feel like guys made us have to do that. Like they... What I was trying to say is like being a girl and our relationships are so intricate and so much deeper than I feel like anyone ever talks about. And most girls don't want to fuck you. They're hanging out with you because they they like like you. you. And Mm -hmm. that, ooh, that's a real compliment. Yes. And I think with reality TV, I'd always had a pretty close circle of girlfriends. I was never someone that had like a hundred friends, but I always felt like I needed that. I feel like girls are always like, oh, you're not cool or popular unless Mm -hmm. you have like 10 girlfriends and you're like a girl group. And I never truly, truly had that. Um, And so I feel like I was always searching for it. And Mm -hmm. that's when I would get girlfriends that were nuts, that were crazy. And so to go into reality TV and meet Hannah was even crazier because one, we were in our later 20s and it's so hard to make friends in your later 20s. I feel like people don't talk about that. And I'm not that outgoing. And so like if I sat home and had no friends, I'd actually probably be fine if I only had like two people because I don't, I'm not like that when I walk into a room. So to meet Hannah and have this just instant connection is when I feel truly feel like felt, oh my God, this is like what being a girl is like, Mm -hmm. like having one person. But it's funny because you talked about like past trauma with girlhood. Yeah. I was a tennis player. Mm -hmm. So my job was to get on the court and beat the girl across from me and girls were my enemies. Like you'd show up to the tournament and all the girls, you know, have their little bags and they're looking at you and you have to beat all of them. And my yeah. dad would be like, that girl, you know, is playing really well. And I'm like, my dad thinks she's better than me. And <laughs> yeah. I'm mad. And I remember I, I actually would deal with a lot of jealousy when I was really younger because so-and-so got a Nike sponsorship or she got written up or she's she's top 10 in the nation. And, and oh why God. can't I be that? And I remember, like, to survive, I was like, you have to change your perspective because you're going to lose your mind. Like, because my whole life was just, did you win or lose against these girls? And once I realized that, like, like their success does not affect my success, mm-hmm. stuff started to shift. And then when I realized that when you collaborate with other women who understand you mm-hmm. and are really badass. I really like the generic quote that's like, you are the five people you surround yourself with. Yeah. It's true. It is it's true. true, though. I love being with people who are smarter than me, more successful, mm-hmm. funnier. Mm-hmm. Like, I just love that energy. When I see a powerful woman, I just want to like, I just want to hold their hand and be like, I just feel safe with them. Yeah. I'm the same. And I always and like if your friend's doing something that's like amazing and great and you're not 100% happy for her, what is the point? Right. They're not the of being friends. You're not I also a real think friend. Paige and I push each other. I think because like one we are we have two totally different personalities. We <laughs> do two totally different things. But like there is zero jealousy and I don't mean to say that in like a cliche way of like oh we're not jealous of each other. It's like a healthy jealousy almost. It's like a motivational. Like I'll see Hannah and I'm like, wow, she just flew to seven cities and did <laughs> seven shows and I can't get off my couch. Get off. Like, yes. also, if, like, like and if it's Paige that. was not doing something for like a couple weeks, I'd get worried. Right. And I'd yeah. be like, let's like what's going on. Yeah. And like when I and Honestly, like when I do something cool and she like shares it on her page, because it really feels like it's me. Uh, and I'm 
And it is a little like braggy, but I like to brag about her. Like yeah, no, I like I, being like, look what she did. This like, look is at what Oscar real friends Della do. Rent dress that she that yeah. blew up the internet. I love making the haters mad on your <laughs> behalf. I'm like, look at my friend. You hate her. Look at her on my yeah, page. If you, if you, because we, we, Paige and I love trying to be successful. Like, let's not pretend that we're yeah. just like, oh, we're zen. No, yeah, no like, we we're, love money. We're hungry. Yeah. We like <laughs> revenge. <laughs> we're we. we I live feel this the hustle. Life. Yeah. We're fierce. We we want to feel alive. And like, if you want to give our moms a good life, that's really all. And my cat, my moms and our cat for sure. (laughs) So like, if you really want to succeed, put successful people around you and brag about them. And the fact that she wants to be my friend, like, makes me feel good. So it's you like, guys we're, are so, well, that's what we're trying to, I mean, we're just obsessed with each other. You guys actually, are yeah. so no, sweet, and but that, it feels healthy. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. feel, it there's no we also ego in your friendship. Don't take each other seriously. Like, I'll tell yeah. her, she'll, she'll tell me tomorrow, like, who the fuck do you think you are, bitch? <laughs> you are an embarrassment. And I'd be like, thank you. I needed to hear that. No, like, right. sometimes she'll walk in in an outfit and I'll be like, Hannah, calm down. let's not wear let's that calm ever down. again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we keep each other grounded. Right. And I think it's because we've seen each other in our yeah. darkest hours. So it's like, let's not pretend you're yeah. someone you're not. You're, I know you for who you are. Mm-hmm. And that's actually like what, it goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning of like, people seeing you is not you. How do you show yourself online? How are you moving in this world? Mm-hmm. And it starts to just be like, you got to get back to just like, the rawest version yeah. of you. And I feel like one of the best things that ever came from mm-hmm. Giggly Squad was us doing our live shows. And... Uh, obviously, I had no idea what to expect. Hannah's been a stand-up comedian, so she, like, understood it. But hearing how many girls will come alone mm. and buy mm. a ticket, which, like, I I can't do anything that. alone, will come alone and literally meet a girl sitting next to her, and then they're the best of friends. And it's the like, best. and a girl will be like, I just moved to the city. I don't know anyone. I have a new job. I came to your show because I listened to you guys, but I came by myself and now I met my entire group of girlfriends. And that alone is like one of the reasons we do live shows. Like just that. Mm-hmm. You're motivating me to do my first one. I've never done yeah, that. Well, I, that's actually, that's a lie. I have with our members, but mm-hmm. I want to do it a little different. And yeah. I also feel like, Every time you do a class is like a live show. It's, right. Like yes. You know it is. You've been in the game. And I think especially for you too, like I feel like you really popped off during COVID. Like everyone was talking about your workouts. And to start like, and people only see you online and then to like be with them in person is such a difference. It's the best. It's insane. No, I, I love energy. it. It gives me like every time I leave, I'm like, this is what I'm meant to be doing. Yeah. Like, it's with no ego, but just confidence Ooh, yeah. of like, of like I feel I'm, safe and good here. Yes. Like I, I said to yeah. my husband after the first like Brooklyn, like the biggest class I ever taught and mm-hmm. a girl raised her hand and she's like, I have no friends. Like, what do you recommend? And I was like, like, these are your people. Yeah. And then five years, three years later came to a talk I did and she brought her best friend that she met from the class. And I was oh like, no, I, I was swear. Like, yeah. like, I like, was no, like, that's life changing. This is so beautiful. Yeah. But I said to Noah that night, my legs were up the wall as I put them up the wall <laughs> every single night. I swear by that I inversion pre-sleep. Time. We're, we're going to get to the wellness yeah. next. Yeah. yeah, I feel like we've been here for two hours and I could actually keep you oh, for no, another. Fine. We don't shut up. <laughs> okay, no. I just, I'm so happy. And I said, I was like, I am meant to be on stage with yeah. like a mic in my hand. I'm like, it sounds crazy, mm-hmm. but a, a version within me becomes alive. Yeah. And it's like this electricity moves yep. that I'm just like, it who is, is such she? A so the feeling. hardest thing I think about being a performer, especially as a woman, is admitting that you want to be heard yeah. and be loud and take up space. Because that seems annoying, cocky, egotistical. Mm-hmm. But some people are meant to be like the performers. Like you're yeah. an entertainer. Either are, it is you or you like to consume and, and you're better at other things. Like right. I'm so shit at so many things. But I know I like to, I become alive with a camera. Me too. <laughs> and it's <laughs> funny when you it's walk in the odds. <laughs> and Anna, our social media manager, like have the camera. You're like, hey, <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm the whole I become thing. more of me when the light's and on. It's funny you mentioned <laughs> ego because I used to have a lot of ego with things that I didn't think for, were right for me. Because I'm like, if I do good in it, then it's right for me, you know? But when it's something you just enjoy, it becomes less about the result and you like just moving in that space. It's funny because actually I've been shitting on reality TV 
But I did a um, stand-up show and someone on reality TV was there. When I walked off stage, they went, oh, that's what you're supposed to be doing. And this was like early on in reality TV. And this person said that to me. Wow. And I was like, they are seeing something. And it's just an interesting like way where you just have to keep like Navigate. keep swimming. Yeah. Until you feel calmness. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's good. I love that. Okay, girls, I know you both said when you walked in, you mm-hmm. were like, we're nervous because like our wellness is not there. And <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I would just love to know. Oh my God. Like what our how you is. take care of yourself. Like you go first. <laughs> what is your, <laughs> you said this was late. So like what time you get out of bed. And by the way, no judgment, no shame. Okay. Like, I would just love free, to hear it all. No, I'm actually going to treat this like a real doctor's appointment. <laughs> like, and I'm going to be honest. Okay, because well, I how want many real, drinks do you have a day? I <laughs> want real advice. Okay. I actually don't drink, really. You don't? Mm Mm-mm. Like, I couldn't tell you. I did dry January, and I didn't even mean to. Like, I didn't even realize. (laughs) You accidentally (laughs) accidentally (laughs) became a pillar of the health community. Um, I go to bed very late. What time? mm, I think I probably get inside of the bed at, like, 11, 30, 12, but I'm not asleep till, like, 1, 1, 32. Mm -hmm. When I used to work for Betches, I could only write my fashion articles if I, like, took an out of all. So whatever. (laughs) And that was, like... It's like, calm down, Paige. You're not writing a novel. Um, (laughs) But I think it's more, I actually think it's more, I'm very anxious as a person. And like, I'll go down a rabbit hole. Like, everyone hates me ever. This is awful. And and I think like taking an edible will kind of turn my brain off that I don't think those things. And then I can like go about my day and like, you know, have a conversation and not think, oh my God, is everyone staring at me? Like Mm -hmm. stuff like that. But I think I'm too much now. Like, I think I need to wean off of it. Okay. I don't really work out. You don't? Uh Uh-uh. Maybe three times a month. Okay. And that would be, like, a lot for me. I eat a lot of sugar. I love a treat. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I do do therapy weekly. Do you lie? During therapy. I don't lie to her. Okay. No, I don't lie to her. Just Maria. Checking. Yeah. No, that's Maria good. Would, when everyone's like listening, so like this is like a, no, yeah, I'm like, know, like I'm a professional. Think, like what? <laughs> like what time do I wake? I wake, but I wake up very early, but I don't do anything until like 1130. But I'm up at like 738. Doing what? On my phone, laying there, contemplating. What do I have to do today? What should I have done earlier? Like. So help me. No, I've, I'm like, <laughs> no, good. I feel like good. we have to do a, a little private session. She of goes, like, this is going to need no, a little this, more. <laughs> <laughs> we need more time than just the, no, this because she goes, do you have a week retreat available? <laughs> are you, are you anxious? Like all the time. Okay. That's why I'm asking yeah. because the thing about cannabis mm-hmm. is it's a bandaid, right? Yeah. It's like this thing that you can consume. By the way, I personally have always loved a little bit of marijuana, but yeah. what I've discovered, especially in the past two years, and I had Doc Amen on the podcast and he showed that it doesn't matter if you're drinking, smoking marijuana, using cocaine, like they all actually do affect your brain mm-hmm. the same in, in a negative way. And I think the thing about marijuana is like, sure, it's legal in a lot of states now, but the effects on the yeah. mood, I don't think are talked about enough. And yeah. it can actually enhance anxiety over time, which is why you feel like the constant need yep. to increase, right? Um, so that was just really something that I I yeah. wanted to ask because it, it can make anxiety mm-hmm. worse. And then make you want to lay in bed and, yeah. you know, take that immediate dopamine hit. It was really my therapist in the past year of this, like, real deep self-discovery of, like, doesn't work for me. Like, yeah. I, because it's, like, almost, it's an escape, right? So 100%. form of escapism to be, like, I just need a release. Yeah. And sometimes when you're stressed, it's just, like, can help bring you down or chill you out. Yeah, but it absolutely is an escape. The turn, like, notice, just start, like, paying more attention to it. And then we can work on just some like gentle shifts. The first thing I would say is to really try to avoid touching your phone and scrolling first thing in the morning. Yeah. Because our brains are just, it's like we take everything in in those 
moments and to just okay. try not to do that, even for like 20 minutes. Okay. That's like the first step. Okay. We're going to start my small. first step and then we're going to... Okay. And start just really observing how you feel throughout the day. Yeah. Like, I want to be the girl that has a matcha station. Yeah, she I feel wants. this within you, though, by I the way. She has want potential. to wake up and be like, sorry, don't talk to me. I have to meditate. Like, yeah. I want to be that because I genuinely do feel like we are hitting a point in, like, our careers and just, like, our lives where... We have to be efficient. I know. You're bo- you literally can't do th- right. things yeah. effectively the way you could if you treated your body right. Mm-hmm. And like, I feel like realizing that is really when you become an adult. And that's <laughs> where I'm at right now where I'm like, wait, I can't work this much if I don't take care of myself. And it just never used to be like that. You right. know, it's like, how old are you guys? You're in your, I'm 31. You're 30. <laughs> I'm, I'm her elder. I'm 32. <laughs> her wise elder. Okay, Hannah, give it to me. What's your morning routine or just like how you take care of yourself? Um, So I'm about to go on like a five-month tour where I'm basically like tomorrow I have a flight and then I get in. I have like four hours before the show and I do one or two shows at night and I normally sleep during the day. Mm -hmm. And then I perform. I get back. I'm all buzzed and high from the performance and it takes a while and I go to bed around like one or two wake up, sometimes have to get on another flight, do it again, and just kind of like keep doing it. Right. And my lower back starts to kill me. <laughs> yeah. And I'm bl- bloated beyond, like like just full third term pregnancy mm-hmm. at all times. And then dehydrated, um, but just running on like sleep or high adrenaline, sleep, high adrenaline. Mm-hmm. Um, but this month, like when I was finally home for a month, I got on this like hip hop yoga Y7 mm-hmm. addiction. Yeah. Which I was obsessed with. I say it's like yoga for girls with ADHD. Cause like just when you start spacing out, you have to like remember the moves and then there's like fun music and it's stuff. Fun. But long story short, a typical day in my life when I'm home is I wake up, I'm a naughty. Like, let's do today. Okay. I woke up at 10 30 because I had a pot at 12. <laughs> 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 that's crazy like that is teenager shit but and yeah but you also you do you, have a different schedule and a different lifestyle what than the average is, nine to five I'll have like a couple stand-up shows where I go to bed late and then it just it it's just, my cycle right so like I went to bed at like two fifteen last night mm-hmm. just watching the Australian Open vibing editing videos I get really I feel like you also never eat a vegetable that I was, feel like I eat more. That like, was an I eat more vegetables <laughs> than you. We weren't talking about that. That was, you just brought that <laughs> up to saying, bring me down. I just think like you do eat a little. Oh, you think a broccoli would help everything? <laughs> maybe, maybe a carrot here and there. I had a green juice three days ago. <laughs> so I, but I get really creative at 11 p.m. Mm-hmm. If I, I get tired, I will. Okay, insane. I will. W- okay, I wake up, 10 a.m., go to hot yoga. This is like a weekend. Come back, pet my cat, fall asleep from like four to eight. She's out. Yeah. Wake up, edit some videos, write some jokes, watch some murder documentaries, put on the Australian Open, jacked up at 11. So many ideas, texting people ideas, thinking of ideas. Around 1.30, I'm like, you should go to bed. Fighting with myself, go to bed, go to bed, go to bed. Get to bed, New York Times Crossword Puzzle. TikTok. Struggle with an <laughs> TikTok, eventually fall asleep, do it all over. I have no energy ever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have no energy. Wow, we are, I, Wait. we've never done that, like back and forth. We are the same person. We're the same person. We have Wait, the same I, never have, I never have energy. Yeah, me neither. And my only job is to go on stage and be the most energetic person ever. Whenever I'm not on stage, I have nothing to give. I always want to be laying down. Like I always. <laughs> We're obsessed. Like, you guys if, love laying like, in the we bed. We love sitting. Like if this was standing, I would have said I can't do this pod. <laughs> I would have said something has come up. My grandma is sick. I do. Yeah. Also, I have past trauma, not to brag, <laughs> but I lived my whole life since eight years old playing two hours of tennis every day. Mm-hmm. So, and in college, I had to wake up at 5 a.m. for practice every day. So when I graduated, I said, what I want to do is I will never wake up early again to work out mm-hmm. and I will never run a time mile 
and I will never work out when I don't want to work out. I've been like tortured, like, yeah, like I done planks that. on hot tennis courts and gotten degree burns as like a oh 13 year old. Like I've been like right. abused yep. physically. So I have this like, I get this high off of being like, I'm going to sleep in. And it's this weird like revenge against no one. Like no <laughs> one's winning. I understand that But I'm that, like, though. you're not going to get me today. And everyone's like, who are you talking to? <laughs> Like, and my mom is like, you got to move on from this. And I'm like, no coach. And she's like, you don't have a coach. <laughs> so I have to like work through that. I don't do any of these like crazy workouts. And I'm like, I am so excited right now. No, I don't we, do. I feel like I'll we, tell you why. We should vlog. This. I have no, no I really want to take this on, by the way, as like just. This is a reality show. Guiding. Sign us up. Yeah. Some. First of all, we're going to start really small. Yeah, super small, little tweaks. She goes, can you write your names? <laughs> <laughs> but the the reason why I really believe you're going to love my workouts is because they're not going to put you into that state that you're used to feeling. Yeah. It's going to give you a brand new relationship to mm-hmm. movement, which I also had to retrain myself into Have understanding. You dealt with former D1 athletes or like that kind of mentality where... Like, you know, people are like, I want to get yelled at. I mean, I worked with those type of trainers. Yeah, that's all I dealt with for over a decade. Right. So I'm like, and also I used to do it because I was going to, I was going to win. Melissa's workouts are literally her whispering to you to just lift your legs slightly. And you're like, I'll literally do whatever you say. No, but I think you're going to like it because the one thing I heard from both of you, anxiety, but like a lack of energy. Yeah. And you guys have a ton of energy, but if you can just, we're going to make some, little tweaks. So yeah. I think avoiding touching your phone first thing in the morning. That's the first thing we're going to work if on. If you're not okay. on your phone, what are you... For one week. Okay. okay. Long, Good 20 question. Minutes? Good question. 20 minutes. So, Just walk w- here in my apartment. No. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would love, I don't want to get to, I always like to make it really accessible and something that you're going to maintain mm-hmm. because that's where it becomes a lifestyle and it doesn't feel like a chore. A form of abuse or a chore mm. or like a detox or like none of yeah. that shit. Ooh, yeah. yeah. None of that shit. Okay. So the first 10 minutes, we're away. The first five minutes. So the first three minutes. First. Just kidding. <laughs> no, start with five. Okay. Because five is a lot if you're used to waking up and opening your phone. Yeah. The phone is sometimes the only way I can get out of bed. Okay. Like that's because the only you way get to... stressed because you're like, shoot, a lot of people are emailing and texting. I should like do this in a different room before you go to bed. I actually do recommend that. Anyways, yeah, not having it next to your bed. I think I can. I think Paige, I don't know if I can. Paige and I, both feel, I don't know. If I we can. also are because not because I wake up in the middle of the night at like three a.m. and like I'm up. Right, and, like, and I'm you'll look through your phone. Then... We also have to address, we're dealing with depression here. <laughs> oh, right, <laughs> we didn't depression. say that also. Yeah, there's depression. For real. Well. Or dips, like dipping low. I feel like I haven't, like my therapist says I'm fine. <laughs> but yeah, we definitely she have dips. Her. I think I have a lot more anxiety, anxiety than mm-hmm. Hannah does. And she has more depression than I do. Yeah, like so I, together, could, we're... I could three days just stay on mm-hmm. my couch with my cat and be like, this is perfect. And I'll spiral a couple times, but I'll think the myself out of it. Was yeah. so good. Like <laughs> yeah. the way you said cat, and then you were like, perfect. perfect. Sorry, I had to. <laughs> so yeah, if I could do anything with my life, it was I wish I could like wake up and be like, well, I'm gonna do the dishes this morning. Like doing the dishes seems like like a a battle to me. Where uh, like can yeah. you have warm water and lemon when you wake up? To have like an action. You want to know what's crazy? When I was in my early 20s, I would do this. Like I, I you was can do more it. healthy. And I don't know what happened. Like you want to wake up and do things. I want to wake up and feel, oh my God, my Good. body's really healthy. Now it's, I really do feel a shift in my body where I'm almost, sometimes I feel like, oh my God, am I like killing it? Like am I, like don't do that and like don't. Yeah. Stay up that late and stuff like that. I do have to say, doing hip hop yoga this month changed my life. <laughs> Great, because <laughs> no, my my mom always says I'm like a dog. Like I have to be run. I'm a when I was a kid, like they yeah. put me into sports because I'm a very physical. Also, physicality brings me joy when I'm on stage. When I'm, yeah. I also like tennis. I still love playing it. Like that's a right. good trick for me. I'll play tennis for hours and be not feel like I worked out. I mean, but it's hard mm. to get a tennis court in New York City. It's a whole thing. But um, I when I moved my body, like. It me- mentally, it was a moving meditation that I needed. Mm-hmm. But like when I'm on the road, I'm not going to fly somewhere 
go to the hotel gym knowing no. I have to do three hours of shows that night. Like I can't. You're going to do yeah. 15 minutes in the morning whenever you wake up because your morning's going to feel different Wait, than someone else's. Wait, I feel like we have like a coach. No, no yeah, we, have, we do. We ha- I'm we so excited. The way she said you're going to do this, I said, I will kiss your foot. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are both really powerful women and Thank you're you, like Danielle. proven to literally direct your lives in the direction you want it to go. Like, look what you've both created for yourself. This is just the next step to take you to that next level. Yeah. yeah. And to have you feeling a way Ooh. that's going to make this explode in an even more impactful way. I love that so much because we even were talking about like Taylor Swift, for example, mm-hmm. her touring schedule. I, I'm like, I want to know what, what her, she do? what she does to recover from a show. How is she hydrating? Like that interests me because yes. you don't, she's not just showing up to her show. Like there's a lot of regimented oh, yeah. health yeah. stuff that goes behind it. Beyonce, like you hear about this stuff and to be a top performer. Now, when I show up to a podcast, I can't be drowsy and no. like yeah, out of it. Right. You, you really have to be top. Shape. You want to be on top of your game mm-hmm. and you guys are, but this is just going to take it to a different level yeah. because when you feel good, everything is better. Everything yeah. is better. Okay. Wait, I just had such an aha moment. I'm going to bring you guys back. We're going to like, we're going yeah. to do some check in. off camera work. Just guiding yep. gently. We have homework. <laughs> and no, I, I no, I'm like serious. This is what no, I'm I needed. Dead. I no, needed need this. Like I needed someone to be like, no, and now start it. Like, it's time. It. Yeah, because you can always you can scroll TikTok and it's like, this is what you should do, but it seems so unattainable. Yeah. I feel like the girls are lying. No, and we need to really start. Yeah. You have to start small. Like I yeah. could tell you, do my seven day reset. It's seven brand new workouts, seven brand new yeah. meditations. And yeah. it's a seven day food plan. You're never going to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I give you one thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you really just try to do Mm -hmm. that one thing. You're also going to see how much it mentally impacts your day. Yeah. Also, I think you're thinking this too, and this is the scariest thing. I'm like, how am I going to have kids? Yeah. I think about it all the time. No. If I want to sleep till 11, I want to be left alone. (laughs) (laughs) No, we're not great candidates. I want to, like, my husband husband will be like, I go, he wakes up early. He's You're a like, farmer. So I'm like, put, <laughs> take the kid, put her on my tit. I'm asleep. And I'll stay up all night watching. He's a I'm literal farmer. But it's He's true. I'm like, how can I have kids when this, and then you don't want to not have kids because you're like, I love lazy. being lazy. That doesn't yeah, seem. No, that's, everything changes. Yeah. With I didn't schedule anything before noon. Before kids. Okay. Yeah. Nothing. I wake up at 5.45 yeah. now. She Willingly. She she's lived three lives before I've we got here. I've lived nine yeah. lives before nine. And I was like, I like, barely <laughs> made it. <laughs> Literally, you guys, barely what, made it. How long is this gone? Because I, I feel like <laughs> no, it's we, been two like, hours. <laughs> yeah. No, we, I, like, I feel like we got. We got. Oh, got <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. No, you guys are. I'm obsessed with you. No, no we love you. And no. thank you for reaching out. Because I feel like we were like a little intimidated. Yeah. Like, we, we were know nervous. who you are. We were obsessed with you. So when you reached out to us, like that was so cool of you. And we really appreciate it. Yes. Thank oh you God. for having us on. Thank yeah. you. I, w- I literally was so nervous to do this. Like I, I went deep last night and I was like, stop. Get off YouTube. <laughs> she saw too Paige much. was oh yelling God, at she someone. Saw too much. Oh God, no, and I was like, much. stop. This is not what you need to fill your brain with. This is not why you're having them on. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. You, so you guys are No, I'm you guys so excited are awesome. for our journey. Yeah, we're Wait, really excited. I'm really excited. And stay tuned for the update. <laughs> Wait, so where can everyone find you? I feel like there's a lot of places you have yeah. to you have to follow Giggly Squad. Mm. Yeah, if you enjoy this pod at all, this <laughs> yeah, go yeah, to give Giggly us Squad if you enjoy the pod. Also, I have a pod with my husband called Burner Phone, which is fun. Um, mm-hmm. Follow Paige on I'm I'm her rep on Instagram, <laughs> TikTok, um, Amazon. Give shop. her handle. Yep. She has yes. live shows on Amazon all the time. Looks Paige for last. Disorbo. <laughs> Disorbo. <laughs> yeah. Am I forgetting anything? No, you nailed it. Don't follow her boyfriend. <laughs> um, no, <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> Craig, shout out to Craig. Um, and yeah, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. And I have live shows, hannahbrand.com slash shows. I have to come to a live show. Yeah. It, we'd love to have No, I'm like there. We'd love to have you. Well, you guys. And we might have to you. do a little like giggler, Melissa Wood. With little like joint. Maybe we do something in the city, like little party. Yeah. Where it's like the wellness girlies. 
Wait, and then I not wellness choose, girlies come no. together. You your I feel like I've inserted myself into your, your friendship, adventure. but don't worry, I'm no, not catty, and I don't bring drama. No, no, oh, yeah, that's boring. We're gonna come back. <laughs> watch your words because you'll wake up to us on your couch. One oh day. no, just like, like Melissa, what is for breakfast? Oh God, I no, I literally me. feel like I'm just How gonna to take you guys. Summer is <laughs> now at your house. I'm just so. gonna take you guys under my wing, and oh my you're gonna be somewhere else. I was trying to be healthy at her Hampton house. Wellness girls, watch yeah. this transition. It's, it's just her being like, you have to stop Get out of my watching house. Netflix. <laughs> you guys are the best. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. This Thank was you. so fun. Yeah, this, Wasn't oh it? God. You're so good at interviewing.